Welcome to Volume 2 of the Leicester City Video Magazine, a chapter in which the men from Filbert Street maintain their challenge for a place in the Premier League. In this second part of City's 1992-93 season, the story of the club's progress continues with all the goals from all the games, including an impressive win over runaway leaders, Newcastle United. Looking for Walsh and finding him. It's a goal! We'll be charting the impressive progress of teenage striker Julian Jochim, beginning with his first senior goal in the Coca-Cola Cup. The boy with the Brazilian name and lightning speed had kicked off the season in City's youth team, but he certainly wasn't overawed by a swift promotion, rewarding manager Brian Little with a series of impressive performances, including a match-winning display at Roker Park. That's a good ball forward and Jochim is onside! As ever, we'll also be hearing the thoughts of the key personalities at Filbert Street. The city attempt to wipe out the memories of their playoff disappointment at Wembley. <laughs> There's not much gone right for us, to be honest. I think we're defending a bit deep. And really up front, we're playing long balls, long hopeful footballs. We're looking for young Julian's pace and forgetting to pass the ball around, which is a silly thing to do. And occasionally we get into them sort of moles. Today's one of them where we're just doing silly things, knocking long balls and defending too deep. And we're getting punished because of it. The action gets underway with the second leg of the Coca-Cola Cup second round tie against newly promoted Peterborough. City hold a crucial 2-0 lead from the first leg at Filbert Street. Two nil down after the first leg, Peterborough were looking for an early goal if they were to have any chance. They got it courtesy of Mick Housel's shot, deflected in after just 16 minutes. But then a crucial goal for Leicester before half-time, scored by Peterborough-born Julian Joachim. Making only his second appearance for Leicester, he beat Ian Bennett at the second attempt. Posh were in front again within a minute. The long free kick eventually turned in by Ken Charlery. But after that, Leicester refused to buckle again, so 2-1 to Peterborough on the night, but Leicester 3-2 winners overall. Defeat on the night, but City had secured a place in round three thanks to Peterborough-born Julian Jochim. His first senior goal had denied his hometown club. And the reward for the 18-year-old youngster was an extended run in the number 11 shirt. Turning ball in, out adequately with by Ian Clarkson, but at the expense of a corner to Leicester City. Steve Thompson to take the flag kick. Ian Norman Roy taking up position at the near post. A deeper ball though. Walsh has got the touch. Oh, and it's turned in by Bobby Davison. 28 minutes gone. And Leicester City take the lead. That's his sixth goal of the season. A long uh, corner coming in. Walsh won it superbly, but look at Davison, completely unmarked. Thompson, Walsh coming again, Walsh didn't get uh, a good connection there, but Leicester City still in possession, it's not a good shot, Joachim, oh and Joachim scores, that's his very first goal in the Football League and it adds to the one he scored at Peterborough in midweek, his first goal in senior football in the Coca-Cola Cup, and uh, the youngster makes Birmingham City's sloppy defending again, took that ball beautifully, what a turn, and Seeley, no chance at all. Joe Chim's second goal in two games meant City had extended their unbeaten league run to five matches, but the home encounter with Peterborough, out to avenge their Coca-Cola Cup exit, kicked off an unwelcome shock to the system. We've got Ormanroyd on the near post here for the corner, and that's always a problem for opposing defenders. Walsh wants those coming in from the back as well, and that was a splendid save by Ian Bennett. Yes, I mean, when the ball is flighted, they're very fortunate like that, because, A, Thompson's a good deliverer, and when Walsh attacks the ball, he sees only the ball. I mean, at the moment, uh, Peterborough are soaking up the open play quite well, aren't they? I mean, the biggest problems have been a couple of corners and the long throws that they've been hurling into uh, the Peterborough box, but generally, in open play, uh, they've more than held their own. Halsell's effort, and that wasn't too far over the bar. Russell Holt looked very casual about that, and probably did have it covered, but it dipped viciously. 
And that's something he is very, very capable of, Mikkelsen. Very good dip. I mean, as we saw in the international this week, the Norwegian goal, that was almost on a par with that. It was coming down a lot quicker than maybe Russell Holt felt. Brian Little just... Uh... Walsh. That's a good-looking ball, Joe Chim onto it. He's done well here. Excellent play, Davison's header just over the bar, but Julian Joachim was the man who really made that happen then for Leicester City. Yes, I mean, he's starting off in that wide position when attacks are developing, then just breaking inside, breaking in and coming inside the fullback. He's produced a ball there that uh, Bobby Davison did as, did as well as you'd have expected there. Norman Roy, Oldfield. Good pace by him and lovely control. Norman Roy in the centre, if he can make the cross. He's done brilliantly here, and in the end, it was Lee Howard who turned it behind for a corner. But the best moment of the game provided by David Oldfield, Rod. Yes, well, that's the sort of thing you would expect from him. He's got pace to burn, he's got good power, and he's at his best when he's running forward. And look at him, look at him, he's hurdling, he's going past, he goes past the next one. And he's such unlucky not to set the thing in for a goal. Peterborough lost 2 0 here just over three weeks ago in the first leg of that Coca Cola Cup tie. Won the home leg 2 1. So Leicester going through 3 2 on aggregate. It's their third meeting, therefore, in 25 days. So they certainly know enough about each other, these two sides. Here's Barnes. And it comes to Phyllis Kirk. That is a brilliant finish, and Phyllis Gerg marks his debut with a superb quality goal. Half an hour gone. Well, that is absolutely magnificent. I'm just sitting here thinking that the boy has had nothing to feed on, and all of a sudden gets a little, little nick back to him there, and he sees only... That's, that's the lad that scores goals, eh? He knew, and we sat right behind it, aren't we, Alan? It was going nowhere else but in the corner of the net. That is a beautiful goal. And it is, he's picked his spot, he's put enough curl on it, and the keeper is absolutely left grounded. And the tempo of the game has really increased again now since the Peterborough goal. Walsh for Leicester. Flicked on to Joe Chin by Davison. Strange clearance there by Halsell. Norman Roy wins it, and that was oh so close to an own goal by Lee Howard. Inches in it, really. Slicing the ball behind for a corner, it could easily have found the net. Sometimes when you lock in, you lock in, isn't it? But it's certainly been an eventful week for Peterborough this, because uh, there have been all kinds of stories in the press in East Anglia that. The club is the subject of a possible takeover bid by a consortium that are apparently headed by Barry Fry, the Barnet manager. I asked Chris Turner, the Peterborough manager, what he knew of the story before the match, and he said, well, it's news to me, I don't know anything at all about it. But those rumours will continue, I'm sure, as Sterling gets in at the other end and scores a second goal. Takeover or not, it looks as though Peterborough are taking over this game. That was a splendid... Route one, second goal. Warrell Sterling, the scorer. Well, that may be the cause of why they are so successful away from home. As you say, a long ball up here. Adcock, I think it is, gets a neat little touch on him. He's off, at, he's off like a bat out of hell there, is Warrell Sterling. Keeper's gone down a little bit slow, I would fancy there, Holt. But, I mean, that is good anticipation from Warrell Sterling there. Be a very difficult game for Leicester to get back into this. Peter will look a constant threat on the attack and are defending well. Here's Barnes on the attack. Good work by him and they backed away dangerously and invited the shot and he didn't let them down. And Russell Holt has tipped it behind for a corner. I must confess when Barnes he cut in on that favourite left foot of his, here he goes almost a similar position where Phyllis Kirk got his first goal. And he set this one out a little bit, and it, it's, it's a good save from Russell Holt. Brian, what's gone wrong? <laughs> There's not much gone right for us, to be honest. I think we're defending a bit deep. 
And really up front we're playing long balls, long hopeful footballs. We're looking for young Julian's pace and forgetting to pass the ball around, which is a silly thing to do. And occasionally we get into them sort of moulds. Today's one of them where we're just doing silly things, knocking long balls and defending too deep, and we're getting punished because of it. A few harsh words at half-time now? I don't know about harsh words. I think there are some constructive words to be said, and, and if, uh, if we can put the things right, we'll still have a chance in the game. Because you really can't see them holding out if, unless they get hold of the ball and keep the ball higher up the field, Peter Burr, at the moment. You get the distinct feeling that Leicester are going to power a goal from somewhere. In goes Smith's long throw, and Walsh is there again. He wins about nine out of ten of these headers. Leicester need a goal. They need it badly, and they need it quickly. Norman Roy looking for Davison, and the goalkeeper did brilliantly then, and Davison went in for what he felt was a genuine loose ball and has caused anger amongst the Peterborough players. A lot of finger-pointing going on there. Bennett lying injured. Walsh, the captain, tries, I hope, to calm things down rather than get involved himself. And I certainly felt that the goalkeeper had uh, proper possession on that. I wonder how much of that's due to one or two... Of... He's buffing Bobby Davis now by the look of it, but I just wonder how much of that is due to the early situations in the first half when the referee seemed as if he was going to allow play on every time somebody competing with the keeper. I mean, this is when Oman Roy gets a neat little glance off it, and Davison, like good strikers, is reading the script. It is in the loose, the keeper's gone brave, but as we saw a week or two earlier, when people pick the foot up like that, you can't always tell whether it's intent or not, but... You know, the goalkeeper's on a hiding to nothing there. Grayson now finding Joe Jim. Good looking ball for Davison, and on the far post, G, and the goalkeeper somehow or other kept that away from the net. He's complaining. I think that uh, he felt the ball might have gone out of play or. Offside, I'm not sure what he's complaining about. He's just done enough there as the captain Welsh to put uh, Big Oman Royd off. They're into the last nine minutes of the game. Peter are leading 2-0. They've conceded a free kick. And I don't think this is going anywhere else but into the danger area, is it? <laughs> and it drops towards Oman chance that was Leicester's possibility of a bit of daylight Brian you threw everything but the kitchen sink at them in the second half yeah, but we could have stayed out there all night and we still probably wouldn't have put two passes together and we still probably wouldn't have scored. I mean, we, um, I mean, at half-time we've decided to have a go at it, knock the balls in there, try and... We wanted to play a bit more football, but as the, as the game went on, it just became more and more obvious that we had to try and score a goal and we got a bit obsessed with banging the ball, but we were never going to score. And um, as I said, we were disappointed we didn't even pass the ball to each other. City were penetrated far too easily to begin with. Fortunately for them, they had a reliable goalkeeper in Keith Welsh. What a great save from Ian Omeroyd. Well, when Leicester began a move deep in their own penalty area, City's cover to get across to Simon Grayson was certainly too slow to begin with. And then when it did arrive, it wasn't effective. So a crisis became a drama indeed, and uh, soon Bobby Davison was released, and he doesn't miss those. He scored over 150 league goals. Visitors end ecstatic. But second half, and Jackie Jakonowski always scheming for City, he sets up that goal. The Andy cole Jakonowski partnership had again prospered for City. Well, City were to obtain all three points on a horrendous own goal there by Simon Grayson. Grayson mistakenly thought he had a City player right behind him as Scott's ball came across. So Grayson thought he had to hurry and get the ball wide of goal swiftly, but he could have taken more time. In fact, in hurrying, he made the mistake. It's in the back of the net. Unlucky for him, lucky for City. Nice 
nicely out, but uh, picked up here by Sheridan. This is Knox, not a bad ball in. Hurst. Hurst, oh, he just ambled through and scores the opener. 19 minutes gone. Sheffield Wednesday take the lead. John Sheridan then with the free kick. Just over half an hour of this game gone. Worthington's, oh, I'm sure it was meant as a cross, but it's gone into the net. Nigel Worthington makes it 2-0. Ronald's corner then, down at the near post. He's to having trouble getting this one away. Steve Walsh not getting much distance with that. A shot coming in from Sheridan. Chance here to get it away. Picked up by Chris Waddle. Oh, what a back heel that is, and there it is. 3-0, just a minute into the second half. Hurst. Oh, good stop. Oh, he's put it in the second attempt. Mark Bright, his second of the evening. And Russell Holt, a little unlucky. All over the top. A chance here for Gordon Watson. Watson's clear. It's up to Holt. Oh, and Watson finishes. 5 0, 70 minutes on the clock. This is Waddle. Being chased by Platner. Waddle slid tight on the ball. This is a 6 0, Chris Bart Williams, the scorer. Two in a minute for Wednesday. <laughs> and Wednesday completely dominating this game now. He's turning into a rout. A chance here for Watson again, and that's his second of the night. And Sheffield Wednesday's seventh. Forward. A rare attack. This is David Lowe. Davison in the middle. Oh, what a header from Davison. A consolation goal in the 79th minute for Bobby Davison. It's 7-1 though to Sheffield Wednesday. Good ball played through here and David Lowe makes the line. Cuts back the ball beautifully. And a superb finishing there. Chris Woods beaten well. There's not much you can say about a 7-1 defeat but at least City's late consolation meant it ended up with something to show for battling it out to the end. Four days later, a home encounter with runaway leaders Newcastle United provided the ideal opportunity to restore morale in the battle for promotion. A crowd of just under 20,000 witnessed a thrilling contest against Kevin Keegan's title favourites. Newcastle's free kick then, swung in, not too impressively. And Hill gets it clear and a chase on here for Davison. And Davison keeps going. This could be an opening for Leicester City. And still, oh, Phil G eventually getting the shot in. And Leicester must count that as a missed opportunity. Less than a minute and a half gone. Helping it back to Nielsen, a strange sort of clearance. And an equally strange header by Walsh. It's been a good start, this, by Leicester City. Gary Mills in possession for them. And the shot deflected away. It's a corner if it goes. And a corner it is. And the goalkeeper, Tommy Wright, so keen to keep the ball in play, he collided with a photographer. 
First corner of the game then to Leicester City. Steve Thompson will take it. Looking for Walsh and finding him. It's a goal! What a marvellous start! And Leicester City are in front with less than three minutes gone. Low the scorer. force it through to Kelly but Hill gets it clear only as far as O'Brien though and that's a good ball for Kelly excellent save well Lowe has justified his inclusion and so has Kevin Poole with that great save from David Kelly That's a good-looking ball on to Davison, and for the second time in the opening minutes here, Bobby Davison guilty, really, of not putting the ball away in a good position. Good header by O'Brien, and an equally fine clearance from Hill. Howie, oh, that's a dangerous ball, and this time surely Davison has to score. He has! <laughs> 15 minutes gone, it's Leicester 2, Newcastle United 0. signs of panic by Newcastle their defenders don't look happy in possession the Leicester attackers like Lowe closing them down when they have the ball and uh, they look very apprehensive at the moment Newcastle not surprised 20 minutes to half time they're two down they could do the goal here the first division leaders who have lost their last two matches in real trouble here Davison finds Thompson what a great user of the ball he is, Steve Thompson. Very rarely wastes it. This is Smith. Infield to Mills. Mills clips it on towards Davison again. It was a lovely little back healer. Oh, the shot by G wasn't far off. Mills doing well to win that free kick. And then cleared by Howie. Thompson gives it away this time. Sheedy on to Clark. Good covering work by Hill. Now Sheedy again. Good looking ball in for Kelly. So close to a goal on his old ground. But in fact, the linesman has flagged offside the verdict. Foul then by Scott on David Lowe, has given Leicester a free kick in a very handy position. And that'll be the signal for their captain, Steve Walsh, to move forward. So too has Smith. It was aimed early towards Walsh, who won it, but it was played a bit too early, really. confusion at the back this time.
let Leicester get away with it again. Oldfield. Back now. It's risky, but it's good football. Oldfield showed brilliant skill then to get out of that tight situation. Davison on to G. Great attack this by Leicester. Can they finish it off with a goal, I wonder? Low. Now Newcastle have got men behind the ball now. They lost the opening initially, though it hasn't gone yet, as it's pulled back to G, and it's struck Howie. Now whether he used his arm to control it is questionable. The referee has decided it's a corner. Corner has been taken quickly and hooked in towards Davison. Danger again. Newcastle not looking secure at the back at all. Gary Mills for Leicester, they lead 2-0 here, and that's a good ball for G. More danger perhaps for Newcastle now as he looks for Davison. Well, for a moment, I think everyone thought that had gone in, but it was into the side netting. Good early throw by the captain, Walsh, finds low. Platt now. And if Lowe reaches that, there's danger here, it's gone out. Goal kick. Offside, Peacock is offside. Hill's really driven that one in for G, but driven it too hard, I think. And Beresford amazingly has conceded a corner there was no real danger then and Beresford just didn't seem able to make up his mind almost an hour gone at Filbert Street as Leicester win another corner they lead 2-0 Thompson Lifts it in high towards Walsh, who inevitably wins it. Oh, that was a great save under real pressure. And the pressure, in fact, was illegal, says the referee. Free kick. O'Brien. This is Brock for Newcastle United. Liam O'Brien. Howie. The ball for Clark. He's got Platt now right behind him. Kevin Scott. Brock again. Chipped on towards Peacock. That was a good looking ball. And the referee's given a foul by Smith on Peacock, and he was right to do so. Sixty-seven minutes completed at Filbert Street. Leicester are two-nil in front, but they face now this Newcastle United free kick in a really dangerous position. And it's O'Brien. No, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful goal that was! Well, you won't see many better free kicks than that. An absolute classic. Liam O'Brien with a thunderous shot has brought Newcastle back into the game. Scott, Beresford and on to Sheedy. All the Leicester fans want to hear is the final whistle now. But Walsh gives them a bit more time with that clearance. Oldfield. And he places it into the path of David Lowe. Scorer of Leicester's first goal. Seemed a long time ago now, as they spent most of this second half defending. Lowe again. Corner, just what Leicester wanted. No, 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 
So deep into stoppage time, Leicester, who lead 2-1, have a corner. Goes in high to Ormond Roy, that's a dangerous ball flicked on, a marvellous save by Tommy Wright. He fingertipped that one away. Well, we've had a couple of minutes of stoppage time already as Leicester just try and keep possession down there in the corner and win another corner. And the referee's coming across to tell them to get on with it here. Leicester quite deliberately using up time here and that was a very rash challenge. And there's a fight going on in the corner now. And I must say, it's the kind of thing that happens when players do try to deliberately waste time like that. Sheer frustration. And the referee couldn't have had a much better view of what went on then. He's got the book out for Kevin Sheedy. Whether it's a yellow or a red. We shall have to wait and see. It's a red card. Kevin Sheedy is sent off to complete a miserable day for the first division leaders, Newcastle United. It looks as though they've lost now, and their Irish international, Kevin Sheedy, is sent off in stoppage time. And at the end of all that, Leicester have wasted a little bit more time, perhaps, because they've got a free kick. And then it goes towards Walsh. The header dropping perfectly. And this surely will be Newcastle's last attack now. Hill belts it into touch. Newcastle's so anxious to get on with it. The referee has looked at his watch more than once already. The Leicester fans imploring him to blow the final whistle. And he's obliged. It's all over, and Leicester City have beaten the first division leaders, Newcastle United, by two goals to one. Lowe and Davison getting the goals. A crowd of just under 20,000, and Newcastle United, after going 17 matches without defeat, have now lost three in a row. Thanks to an inspired second-half performance from Kevin Poole, City had ended their losing sequence in the best possible manner. Victory over the league leaders had put City back in the top three, cutting the gap behind the men from the northeast to nine points. Frustratingly, it was a deceptive result. Ball over the top, and this is Grant. Chance here for Charlton to take the lead. Oh, and he's turned it wide of Kevin Poole's goal. Kim Grant. Then to Charlton Athletic. Strong wind. Make use of it. Well, that's a good effort. Great save by Kevin Poole. What a strike that was from John Robinson. And that brought the best out of Kevin Poole. And here's Robinson picking up that uh, loose ball, and what a shot. What a save. And again. Colin Walsh, still no score here at Upton Park. Charlton looking for the win, the oh, and there's the first! Turned in by Gary Nelson, and that's his 100th goal in the Football League. And what a time to score it. Victory tonight would put Charlton third in the first division table. And that's his uh, third goal of the season. This is free kick. Burn causing havoc in the middle there, but uh, has to get it away again. Patner with a long ball. Oh, and an incident off the ball there. And it's involving uh, Steve Walsh. This is one for referee Mr. Folks from uh, Clacton to sort out. There was the uh, challenge. Oh, and it's a red card for Steve Walsh. So Leicester City trading by one goal to nil, a reduced to ten men. 
There's still 41 minutes left for play. Ian Norman Roy coming on. Some changes in the Leicester formation. Quick throw from Smith. Ormond Roy winning it at the uh, near post there. So uh, tall is Ormond Roy. Such a handful in the air. Stuck coming forward. Great spirit. David Lowe. And still in control though. Leading by one goal to nil. The header there by Colin Hill. Thomas Lieburn. Took by Gary Nelson. Missed by Nelson, tries the shot, oh, and it bounces past Kevin Poole. 2-0 to Charlton Athletic. 76 minutes into the game. And the substitute seems to be proving the match winner for Charlton Athletic. On the bottom side. That's the return ball, this is uh, Nelson again. Destroyer of Leicester so far. To his cross. Oh, what a save by Kevin Poole. He clawed that one down. Conceded the corner. But great uh, acrobatic save that by Kevin Poole. This is Walsh. Right, it's Bumstead. And Chelsea midfield dynamo. And maybe he'll get a shot in. No, rolls it square. Comes to Minto. To Walsh. Walsh tries a left footed shot and another great save from Kevin Poole. Need some time to see that one, but it was well struck by Walsh. Kaju to take the corner kick. To Walsh. Kevin the other ground is Walsh this evening. Kaju rolls it inside to Bumstead. Bumstead tries his luck, but that one's uh, parried, picked up here by Robinson. Oh, and another magnificent save by Kevin Poole. Didn't really get hold of it, but did just enough. Irons down the line for Higgins. And given away clumsily by G to Morrissey. Now Dave Higgins again for Tranmere. And good football here from the visitors. Higgins swings it in towards Aldridge. Oh, that was a brilliant save by Poole. And even Aldridge applauds it. Well, that was vintage John Aldridge then, moving in menacingly to the near post. A good snap header and an excellent reaction save by Kevin Poole. Clearance by Vickers. Hill wins it back. Walsh to low. Higgins took it off him. Play a little bit scrappy and untidy at the moment. Let's see if Walsh can bring some composure to it for Leicester. Intelligent ball for Thompson. He's got a shot and produced it. And Nixon flicked it over. Well, Steve Thompson can hit a ball powerfully from any range, and he proved it then with that uh, long-range effort. Nixon wasn't sure where his crossbar was, so took the easy route out by conceding the corner. And sweeps it out wide to Nevin. That's oh, a great ball by Nevin for Mungle, and still Mungle, and good goalkeeping in the end by Kevin Poole. Well, it was a brilliant, clever ball by Nevin. And Mungle survived the first challenge. Kevin Poole bravely at his feet to prevent him going any further. Norman Royd wins the header, that's what he was brought on for. And Lowe wins the free kick from Higgins' foul. He was holding him. Thompson swinging it in again towards Norman Royd. And Norman Royd shot! Oh, that was a splendid effort by Ian Norman Royd. Well, he's had his problems, the big man. The crowd here have been on his back a little ever since he came here. He's only scored one goal, but since he's come on in this match, he's made a very positive contribution and almost scored then. 
Hill. Ormanroyd's header, but it drops into no man's land. You can't pick this one up, remember? They control it pretty neatly. Malkin, that's a good first time ball on, and it breaks dangerously here, and Nevin in the clear. And he scored. Pat Nevin scores for Tranmere Rovers. And Leicester can hardly believe it. Well, the small band of Tranmere Rovers fans celebrate, and with only eight minutes to go, what an important goal that could be by Pat Nevin, latching onto that header as it dropped very kindly for him, and he had the presence of mind to go on and find the corner of the net. Nevin sliding it in, it's a good-looking ball as well, and danger here as iron shot is deflected away, and that's the end. Booze all round Filbert Street. What a difference a week can make in football. Pat Nevin's goal, enough to give Tranmere Rovers only their second away win of the season in the league. And Leicester City, just a week after beating the leaders Newcastle United, have come down to earth with a very big bump indeed. Final score, Leicester City nil, Tranmere Rovers won. Armstrong knocks it short for ball. That's an excellent effort, and he hits the underside of the bar, and Cunnington goes in with a diving header from the rebound, and Leicester survive. What a brilliant shot that was by the Sunderland captain, Kevin Ball. Here's Davenport, as Mills gave the ball away. He's done well here, it's a brilliant effort. That really was class play by the former Nottingham Forest player, and might well have ended in a very fine goal. The interesting part of this, he's kept the defender on the move, backpedaling, backpedaling, looked up and just bent it to the left of the keeper, and he's so unlucky. Good skill, good play, and he's still got that ability to take people on. Smith. Thompson takes over. That's a good ball forward, and Joe Chim is onside. It's a goal. Leicester City have scored. Joe Chim takes the credit, though in the end it might have been the defender who put the ball over the line, but who cares? Leicester are in the lead. 27 minutes gone. It's a lovely clip over the top. Joe Chim runs onto it. The keeper here stops. And there it is, over the top of the keeper. Good skill, followed it in, got his head to it. Good follow-up. Well played, well played, Leicester. Just gets his head to this. And he's brave. Well, I wonder if Ball will think... No, he's obviously not thought that that was uh, the right kind of distance to get a shot in, as he did earlier in the match. Kay swings it in instead towards Goodman, and that was a fine header, and Davenport! The equalising goal! Sutherland. Amazing, I was just here thinking, why not let Kevin Ball have another crack at it? They take a different free kick, floated in, Goodman heads the ball down, and Davenport took his chance superbly well. There's the header going across, Davenport get over the ball, bang into the back of the net, and it's a vital goal, that is, because Leicester wanted to hang on to half-time. Terrific header by Goodman to set it up. Leicester will be very unhappy about the marking, I think. Here's Kay. And a good clearance from Walsh, although it drops straight to Armstrong. Armstrong forward, it's a good ball for Davenport. It's 2-1 to Sutherland. No, it's come out again. Amazingly, it could be yet. Atkinson with the shot. And that's gone wide to Davenport. And now ours. And then Oldfield in the end got in to clear it. Oh, what a remarkable flurry of activity around the Leicester goal then, John. Right, here it goes. Head down, technique. Right, I'm going to hit the target. Norman Roy heading it on, and Walsh in there, and, not, and he scored again, Joe Chim, yes! Well, Leicester, having suffered all that pressure at the start of the second half, have broken away and got a second goal. It's a good header back across here. Walsh got up, nodded it down, little mistake there, bang, there she goes, she's in the net, and poor Malcolm Crosby now 
not saying I, I'm tempting fate, but that was the problem. They were missing the chances up front, and now he'll suffer. Goodman. Challenged by Thompson, but Goodman's there to win it back, and it's a good-looking ball, and that could well be a penalty, and it is! Cunnington celebrates. Mills is absolutely furious. The referee had no hesitation, though, in pointing to the spot. Yes, a ball in here, it's played in there, he takes it on his right foot, and there's a scythe. Whether he really made the contact, he made it look, I wouldn't like to say, but at the same time, the referee has pointed to the spot, Peter Davenport got the job, and Malcolm Crosby's got his fingers crossed. So this, to make it 2-2. Two -two. And he saved it brilliantly! Davenport shakes his head and, uh, well, if you're of the school of thought that thinks every penalty should be scored, You'll have to criticise Devin Paul, but that was a fine save for my money by Poole. Kevin Paul won the man of the match off of Breezy and I on his debut, and therefore I think he's in with a great chance of winning it again after that save. Oh, what a start for Leicester City, just three minutes into the game, and a handball given against Heathcote. Steve Thompson to take the uh, penalty, awarded by Roger Dilks, the referee. Thompson, oh, beautifully taken, beat John Sheffield, all ends up. It's 1-0 to Leicester. And, uh, Steve Thompson, that's his third goal of the season. Really enjoyed that one, didn't he? Long throw experts at Cambridge United. That one well won by Ormadroid. This is O'Shea, the uh, Cambridge skipper, former Arsenal player. A good move developing here for the U's, and it's there, is it? No, good save. Oh, followed up there by Steve Claridge. Kevin Poole saved the first shot, but Claridge joyfully swept the ball into the net. Steve Thompson, number eight, then. He could well have a crack at goal from here. Oh, beautiful little chip. Oh, and he's beaten Sheffield. 2-1 to Leicester City. 78th minute of the game, and what a beautifully taken free kick this is. Sheffield well out of position. So the rain teeming down now as Leicester defend in this last couple of minutes. Heathcote got the touch, oh, and he's turned it in. 2-2. Two -two. For the second successive home match, City had conceded a costly late goal. Heathcote's equaliser had come two minutes from time and fortunes at Filbert Street didn't improve in the next encounter with rock-bottom Bristol Rovers, now under the management of caretaker boss Malcolm Allison. Hill caught in possession, Saunders to Browning, first time shot, great save from Paul. Well, the first bit of enterprising football all afternoon, mistake by Hill, lovely ball from Saunders, found Browning in space, no nonsense, hit it well, Pull away to his left, turned it wide. Good shot, good save. Smith away. Mills. Does well, does very well. Oldfield now. He's got Platt now wide if he wants him. Back with Thompson. Bad ball from Thompson. Rovers come again. Saunders. Threads it through. Shot comes in, Arch! Oh, a tremendous goal! Totally out of the blue. The ball, it all started with a bad pass from Thompson. Picked up by Carl Saunders. Threaded it through to Channing. Who from the edge of the penalty area, let rip, and Kevin Paul still hasn't seen it. Grayson will start it all over again. Got a bit of pace over the halfway line. Lovely running from Oldfield. Takes it wide. Oh, and then he spoils it all. But to be fair, good goalkeeping from Brian Parkin. Lovely ball from Simon Grayson. Oldfield did everything right, made space for himself.
Parkin loses it, the shot comes in, oh it's over the top from Philpott. Mills with the corner, takes it. Ball hammered away, up with Hill. Bad ball from him. The Rovers have got a break and there's nobody back. Shot comes in, oh my goodness me. How costly that will be, we don't know. But that really was a dreadful miss by Andy Tilson. A break from halfway, all on his own. A shock defeat by Bristol Rovers meant City had now crashed in three of their last five matches at Filbert Street. A worrying loss of home form, but any thoughts of a crisis were dispelled at Grimsby Town. Henry Mills, good cross by Mills. This is David Oldfield. Oh, and what a header! It loops in over Wilmot. What a start for Leicester City. Nine minutes gone. David Lowe with the corner kick. It's there for the return ball, but uh, Lee Philpott does it by himself. Good one, this. Hooked away again, Oldfield, oh, and it's there, yes! It was deflected and bobbled in, 2-0. Free kick then to Grimsby Town. Grimsby desperate to get back into this game. Ball teed up here for Groves, oh, what a shot from Groves! 2-1, 50 minutes gone. Colin Gibson with the free kick, nice little chip. This is low. Turns it nicely across the goal, and there it is. Ian Ormondroyd, that surely seals it for Leicester City. Beautiful little chip in, but look at the space that Lowe's got to turn this cross in, and Ian Ormondroyd plants it nicely. A well-deserved win had re-established City in a keenly contested battle for promotion. With 20 league matches completed, it was so far so good. Brown Little's men handily placed in the top seven. Missing out in the summer's playoff final at Wembley has resulted in no adverse effect on morale at Filbert Street. There are plenty of reasons to be optimistic about the future. And the competition is shaping up for an exciting second half of the season. Whatever the outcome, we'll be keeping you in touch every step of the way. Look out for Volume 3.